Okay, so we've covered um, all of our alkene reactions, right? We know how to synthesize alkenes, and we know different functional groups we can make when we start with alkenes, right? So kind of putting everything together here, we know if we have alkyl halides, right, via elimination reactions, alkyl halides can make alkenes. Okay, so these are our elimination reactions, E2, E1, even though E1 is not that useful. We know if we have alcohols, right, we can use alcohols to synthesize alkenes, right? That's what we called our practical E1. All right. And then from last, um, last unit, we also realized when we start with alkenes, right, there's a, a whole bunch of products we can make from alkenes. So I can take an alkene and I can transform that into an alkyl halide. We can transform those into alcohols, right? We can transform these into epoxides. We can transform alkenes into carbonyl groups, right? We can form ketones, aldehydes, carboxylic acids, right? Alcohols, we can make alcohols. We can also make diols. Those diols can be syn or anti, right? Alkyl halides could be um, dihalides, where we have two of those, right? We can also form halohydrins, all right? So what this means now is that there's, we can now combine these reactions right, to do uh, organic chemistry transformations that we haven't really seen before, all right? So this is basically a little roadmap for us to just kind of think about how we can combine these reactions together in new, in reactions together in new and unique ways, right? So I like to think of our reactions as basically tools in our toolbox, okay? So we've learned how to hammer in a nail. We've learned how to use a screwdriver. I've learned how to use the other end of a hammer to take out a nail, right? To unscrew something, to cut a board. These are our tools, okay? So, so far we've talked about reactions or we can think of reactions as tools, right? But now we wanna start thinking about how can we use those tools together to build something, right? If you're gonna build a birdhouse, you have to take boards cut those boards, right? You have to then hammer them together or screw them together. You have to paint it, right? There's a lot of different steps to get a final step of building a birdhouse. So what I wanna show you here in this video is really how we can combine these reactions together to do transformations that we haven't really seen before, all right? So let's look at a couple of examples here. Let's take this alkyl halide, okay? And let's convert it. Let's just remember one of the basic reactions we've talked about, right? Here's just a basic reaction. We can think of this as a tool, right? What's a tool we know? Alkyl halide to alkene, right? We know how to do that here. Right, so in here, we know we can just do this in one step, right? If I treat this with a small base, like NaOH in water and heat, right, we can form our alkene. And there's multiple bases we could use. We could use sodium hydroxide, I could use sodium methoxide, I could use sodium ethoxide to get that reaction to go, all right? So in this simple example, we're just filling in our reagents to show how we can do this. But now let's look about how we can combine these reactions together, all right? So what if I have an alkene like this, 
and I want to make a different alkene. How can we do this, right? So we've never learned one reagent to move an alkene. We haven't learned that, all right? So what we really need to do now is think about how we can combine the reaction we've the combine the reactions we've learned, right, to make this transformation to go from this alkene on, on the left to the one on the right, right. So I want to point out if you look at this alkene here, the one on the left, right, that's an sp two carbon. That's also an sp two carbon here. Okay. So is there a functional group that I can go from an alkene to a functional group and then that functional group can go back to an alkene? So is there something in the middle here I can go from an alkene to some functional group and then go back to form an alkene? And in fact, there is an alkyl halide, right? An alkyl halide we know when I start with an alkene, I can synthesize an alkyl halide, and I can go from an alkyl halide back to an alkene, okay? So if you look here, this carbon, right, with the dot is sp2 and hybridized in both examples. So what we'll see here is an alkyl halide as an intermediate on that carbon can be utilized to do this transformation. Right, So in step one, if I treat this alkene with HCl, right, step one HCl, that will add a chlorine to the Markarnikov position, right? And then now we know, can I do an elimination reaction? Absolutely. So in step two, we can do a simple elimination reaction using a small base, NaOME, in methanol and heat, right? So now we are combining the reaction we've done to do a more complicated transformation, okay? So what you're gonna see is alkyl halides are really good intermediates to kind of, uh, in between, to go in between two alkenes. So that's the first example. Let's look at another example here. What if I wanted to do um, what if I wanted to synthesize this? Right, how could we do this reaction? So again, we think about it, knowing alkyl halides are good intermediates. We see the, in the reactant on the left, I've labeled the sp2 carbon on the left, that same carbon is sp2 hybridized on the right. Again, so we can really think of an alkyl halide on that carbon as being an effective intermediate, intermediary we can form to go from the alkene on the left to the alkene on the right. So how would we do this? How would we fill in our reagents? Again, here, I wanna add a chlorine to the Markarnikov position. Again, we could use HCl. In this case, let's just use something a little different. Let's just use a different halogen, HBr, okay? That would put a bromine here. Now, how do we form an alkene that's not as stable, that's uh, less substituted? Now, I can't use a small base. I have to use a large base, potassium t-butoxide, okay, with heat. So now we're combining these reactions together, right, to form an interme intermediary product to do this transformation. So what we're now trying to do is utilize the reactions that we've learned. We're trying to utilize the reactions we've learned by using multiple of these together. Let's look at another example. Let's take a, a chain here. In this example, let's start with a halogen here. And how could we make this product there? Okay, so what are the reagents we could use to make this? All right, 
So when we do these more complex transformations, right, I always think it's a good idea to number your carbons, to number your carbons, okay? And again, just a reminder, I'm using numbers or letters to keep track of the carbon atoms. I'm not asking you to name these molecules. If we name the molecules, we have to very specific, we have to number these very specifically, right? That's really important. But if I'm just trying to keep track of doing reactions, I can number these however I want, all right? So I'm just gonna arbitrarily go one, two, three, four, five, and see if I can find those same carbons here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that matches up pretty well, right? We can see sort of this branching, three, four, five, three, four, five, and then we've got carbons one and two. All right, so that looks like a pretty good match on how to do this, all right? Now, how can we make this transformation, all right? How can I get an OH on carbon one when here I have a group at carbon two, right? What can we have? What's a good intermediate we can have where I can kind of move this over, right? What can be in between carbons one and two, right? So a good intermediate here we should think about, because this is what we've been focusing on, would be an alkene, right? I know I can go from an alkyl halide to an alkene, and I know I can go from an alkene to an alcohol, all right? So that's a really good intermediate that we can use here. All right, oh, let's, went too far. So now let's think about the reagents we need to do this, okay? So here we go from an, um, we start from an alkyl halide, we're gonna make an alkene, all right? So what we should notice here, I have a chlorine at two, I want the alkene to be at one. We need to do an E2 reaction, okay? So step one is an E2, and we have to number our reagents here because they're different steps. Here I'm forming the least or the less stable alkene. So what do I have to use here? I have to use my large base, potassium t-butoxide and heat. And it's okay if you include the solvent here as well, but you actually don't have to. Step one would get me to the less stable alkene, okay? Now in step two, how can I add an OH to the carbon on the right, right? Well, if we notice, the carbon on the left is the Markarnikov position. That's the anti-Markarnikov position on the right. So how can we add an OH to the anti-Markarnikov position? That's the reaction of hydroboration, okay? So here, how do we do hydroboration, right? We can take... Um, BH3 in THF, and again, that's a two-step itself, followed by NaOH in H2O2, okay? So steps two and three can now get us to an alcohol where we have added an OH to the anti-Markarnikov side. So what I really want to demonstrate here is now we're at the point where we can start combining these reactions together. And that's what we're gonna see moving forward, is we can now synthesize more complex molecules when we use all of our tools in our toolbox, right? We can build a birdhouse. When I use a saw and hammer and nails and paint, right? So we're now gonna be combining our reactions together and I just wanted to show you a couple examples of how we can do that.